Good morning, everybody. This is Joe Cusick, Vice President of Wealth and Asset Management from MoneyBlock.com. Well, short-term breath continues to still be bearish, you know, and we're just seeing right now an oversold bounce. Uh, the S&Ps are waffling only uh, right around break even today on this uh, Friday, final day of the trading week. If you take a look at the nine sectors that uh, are the most offensive sectors, you basically see it split down the line. You got five sectors uh, of the five, five of the most offensive ones. You got two up, two down, and one flat. If you take a look at the S&Ps, um, they're holding its break breakout in the short term, but we're going to watch that. Um, that basically 2003 on the spiders or 2030 uh, up there in that range on the S&Ps, that's going to be the challenge point. The 2100 level, uh, excuse me, the 2100 level is the challenge point that's got to keep uh, above that on the S&Ps. Otherwise, if we start to see weakness in that 2098, 2099, we're going to see if the bears are going to challenge that again after this uh, bounce from the earlier pullback this week. Taking a look at the tech sector, still seeing some relative weakness there. It does still hold its uh, three-day upswing, but we're going to see, again, those critical levels. They need to be held going into the, uh, the end of this week. Um, small caps, um, they were oversold definitely uh, from the beginning of this week. They bounced, but there's still some relative weakness. Now, we're going to want to watch some of the, the continued domestic uh, economic reports that keep coming out over the upcoming weeks. That's going to give us a pulse on two fronts. One is, how is the economy moving around? That's really going to impact these small caps. The other thing is, is that we want to keep an eye on that because we're going to start to get a pulse of what the Fed might possibly do coming into September with the potential for them to move rates after this week's uh, decision not to do anything, but showing that they could be moving rates uh, in the near future. Uh, and in spite of the fact that everyone's looking at that saying we're looking in the, towards the end of the year or the beginning of next year, I don't know. Uh, specifically, if you want to look at the bonds, that'll be, again, the great barometer of what's going on. In the short term, they continue their uptrend. You're actually seeing the long end of the curve trading right around 156 this morning. Uh, that's pretty impressive. I don't think anybody here on the floor uh, or who, whom watch bonds would think that they were ever going to get back up to these levels, but they are there. They're, they're, uh, that uptrend, uh, we're going to look for a test of, the, of that support right around that 156, 154 level. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens going on uh, to the end of the, today's closing day. The dollar, the dollar has bounced off support. Uh, it's got some strength and it remains in, uh, in an uptrend overall. Want to keep an eye on that dollar action going into next week's trade. Oil, oil had a two-day bounce at the beginning of this week. It's sub subsequently pulled back. The downtrend continues. So that oil action and oil names, let's see if some pressure starts to come in in spite of that bounce that we saw earlier this week that's almost been fully retraced if you take a look at the crude markets. And then finally, gold. Um, gold continues to be in a short-term downtrend, overall downtrend. Uh, it looks like that trend is going to continue unless we have some sort of ripple like we saw earlier this week that has some sustainability. It looks like gold's downtrend is going to continue at least into the end of this week. So we're going to keep an eye on that going into next week's trade. All right, folks, this is Joe Cusick, uh, from, Vice President of Wealth and Asset Management for MoneyBlock.com from the floor of the CME with your Traders exclusive. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you next week.